Hi there, my name is Sarah and I'm a native aquatic biologist with the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources here in Washington County. Today I'll review the successful eradication of invasive red shiner from the Virgin River Basin in Utah, which the division and its partners have been working on for nearly three decades and actually accomplished in the summer of 2021. I'll start with a quick overview of the Virgin River, its native fish, and the damage caused by red shiner. Then I'll describe our red shiner eradication plan and show how native fish have been recovering. So basically I'm distilling 30 years of conservation work into 15 minutes. It'll be quick, but essentially we hope that this case study provides some useful information for other folks. Who are trying to get rid of invasive species and conserve desert fishes throughout the arid west. This was a big task, so I want to start by just acknowledging and thanking all the partners that made red shiner eradication possible, including a lot of you in this room today. To set the stage, the Virgin River is a linear oasis that flows through the otherwise arid Mojave Desert. It flows southwest for about 135 miles from its headwaters above Zion National Park through Utah, Arizona, and Nevada before finally emptying into Lake Mead. The river brings essential resources to a parched landscape and supports a surprisingly diverse species assemblage that includes our six native fishes. So these are the native fish of the Virgin River and unfortunately like fish throughout the arid west, their populations have declined. So five out of the six are protected at either the state or the federal level, including the endangered woundfin and Virgin River chub. In response to declining fish populations, the Virgin River Fishes Recovery Plan was approved in 1995. And this document identified displacement by red shiner as the major threat to native fish. For many of you, the red shiner needs no introduction. Uh, this invasive minnow is native to the Mississippi River drainage. And out here, it was probably first introduced as a bait fish into Lake Mead. And from there, it swam upstream and colonized the Virgin River in Utah by the early 1980s. This fish is incredibly fecund and vigorously competitive, and it just decimated native fish populations. Red shiner moved upstream, displaced native fish, and quickly occupied all reaches downstream of the Washington Fields Diversion. Woundfin in particular just cannot coexist with red shiner. So by the early 1980s, this endangered fish remained in just 16% of its historically occupied range. Case in point, uh, this graph shows woundfin populations at a long-term monitoring station. And you can see red shiner arrived here in the 1980s and woundfin numbers just plummet right after colonization. So what can be done about this? In response to declining native fish populations, a plan was developed to completely eradicate red shiner using systematic stepwise downstream phases. And we'll discuss each of these steps in a bit more detail. The first step was to segment the river into six manageable phases. So the plan was to start red shiner eradication upstream in phase one and work progressively downstream to phase six. Several fish movement barriers were established along the river and its tributaries, which prevented red shiner from recolonizing a reach after a phase was complete. Some of these were new construction, while others were just existing structures that were modified to act as 
usually temporary low flow barriers. The second step of the eradication plan was to map and monitor flows for the Virgin River and all its adjacent water bodies. This could be tricky in complex systems, but it was essential to identify all potential red shiner refuge habitat and to calculate precise rotenone concentrations if chemical treatments ended up being necessary. Step three was red shiner distribution monitoring. And here, intensive sampling was conducted using seines and traps to identify all occupied and potential red shiner habitat. The next step was to decide if mechanically removing red shiner was a viable option. And this was effective in a few key reaches during low density colonization events and prior to spawning. Mechanical removal involves repeatedly seining or trapping to achieve 100% eradication, which as I'm sure you can imagine is extremely labor intensive. In places where red shiner were already well established, we conducted chemical treatments using the piscicide rotenone. Before these treatments began, native fish were salvaged, and then rotenone was applied at a three parts per million concentration using calibrated drip barrels and backpack sprayers. If necessary, potassium permanganate was used to neutralize rotenone, and after treatments were completed, native fish were either stocked or allowed to just naturally recolonize a reach. Obviously, we don't have time for a really detailed description of rotenone treatment logistics, but suffice it to say, they can get complicated especially when you consider all the planning, regulatory compliance, surveys, equipment, and outreach that are needed. And again, the plan was to start in phase one and work progressively downstream to phase six, but this wasn't always a nice, neat, linear process. Sometimes Red Shiner would recolonize a reach and then a phase would need to be treated, sometimes multiple times. So this entire process lasted from 1996 to 2021. Let's move on to the results. So this timeline shows red shiner eradication from the 1980s to today, and we definitely don't need to get lost in the weeds here. I just want to give you a sense of the, the scale and complexity of the project. So these are the most important events from that timeline. Between 1996 and 2008, phases one through five were completed. So it took 32 chemical treatments and, you know, countless St. Halls to clear 40 miles of the Virgin River and all of its off-channel water bodies. And then from 2009 to 2021, phase six through the Virgin River Gorge was the main focus. Um, Rotenone treatments were conducted here in 2014, 2018, and 2021. And this phase was uniquely challenging for a few reasons. Specifically, treatments were conducted across the Utah-Arizona state line, which just added a layer of complexity. And I think this phase definitely highlights how critical those interagency partnerships were, especially here with Arizona Game and Fish. Despite all those challenges, it worked. And after nearly three decades, red shiner were successfully eradicated from the Virgin River in Utah. These maps show a before and after red shiner distribution. And then beyond just red shiner eradication, 
native fish populations are beginning to recover. And actually in about 15 minutes, Sky Hedden with Arizona Game and Fish is going to discuss native fish recovery in more detail. So stay tuned for that. So what's next? As we all know, the hard work of conservation is never really over, so there's still work to do. We have to be vigilant to make sure red shiner don't return, and then support our partners in those downstream states with their own eradication efforts. And then we'll have to continue to address threats from other non-native species in the Virgin River Basin. So there's a lot of work ahead, but I do think it's important to recognize success stories like red shiner eradication. And I hope that some of this information will end up being useful for other folks who are trying to remove non-native species and protect native fish. So I'll end with this quote from the evolutionary biologist, Michael Soule, who said, there are no hopeless cases only people without hope and expensive cases. Okay, thanks for your time. And I think we have a few minutes at the end here for questions.